Isn't life grand? It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, let's just say that life is grand, magnificent, wonderful, over the top good. We want to just hang in that frequency and vibration as you scan the audience uh, with your eye beyond the eye and, and notice the beauty and the love and the, the powerful elegance that's all through the congregation. Come out of your personal mind for a moment and just see the presence of God that is here moving through all of these beings and release a prayer that everyone can really wake up uh, to the glory that they had with God before the beginning of time before the beginning of experience, before the beginning of anything that would hinder our unfoldment. Just have that as an inward desire. And then we always love to do this, well, at least most of you love to do it. Some of you don't like it, but sometimes it's good to do things you don't like. It makes you grow. So they're already starting back here. But uh, look at somebody right next to you and just say, I love looking at you. It, it's one of the greatest things I get to do today. I see so much beauty in you. I see so much love in you. I see so much power in you. Infinite potential is in you. Potency of joy is in you. Oh, wealth and prosperity is in you. And you've come to set it free. Just like me. Let's do this together. Let's change the world for the better. In the here and now. And so it is. Amen. Touch and agree. And feel yourself already being buoyed up in the vibrational field of what's been established here through our meditation service, our meditation music, our wonderful chanting, our powerful music, and your touching and agreeing about the great power, the great presence, and the great love that is within you and seeking to express by means of you. You're now trending towards success. You're trending towards well-being. You're trending towards joy. You're trending towards love. You're trending towards more good than you could possibly imagine. Our topic this evening is, let me remember, come on now, don't, don't tell me yet. Something about the real. Oh, know the real, heal the unreal. There it is. <laughs> know the real, heal the unreal. We're a part of a spiritual community that is metaphysically always trending towards the mystical, which means we have an understanding that the real is with a capital R. The real is that which is eternal, that which is forever, that which is spiritual that which never had a beginning and will never end. There is something real about you. There is something forever about you. And us who are on the spiritual path of awakening, we have the tendency to engage in spiritual practices such as affirmative prayer and meditation and life visioning and a sacred service that we may develop a vibrational coherence around that which is real as it is juxtaposed to that which is temporary, and that which is transitory. Our spiritual practice is about moment by moment by moment coming back to reality and that which is real versus that which is realistic. That which real is realistic is real-like. And the world is run by individuals who are realistic because their perception is on that which is transitory and that which is temporary. The lies and the father of lies. Lack and limitation, scarcity, not enoughness, that breeds, that breeds greed, that breeds jealousy, that breeds envy, that breeds rivalry, that breeds uh, in, uh, uh, immature competition. That is, they're realistic based on a lie of a separation. That which is real is uh, that which is eternal. Plentitude, abundance, Harmonizing a prosperity, the elegance of uh, the magnificent uh, universal, universal presence that's everywhere in its fullness, that which is real. Most people live in the realistic. Most people live in that which is in time and space and call it real. They have a limited perception until there's either a crisis 
or until there's a bit of inspiration that pulls them out of that which is temporary. You are here because your spiritual practice and your spiritual inclination and your intentionality is having you embrace that which is real on a regular basis until there becomes, as Dr. Howard Thurman calls it, a deliberate intention and an unconscious awareness of your trending towards reality. You're trending towards awakening. You're trending towards the peace and the love, the harmony and the wholeness and the abundance that's here except it's being suppressed by your limited perception. Now, when you engage in spiritual practice on a regular basis, that uh, deliberate intention and unconscious awareness uh, because becomes your operating law, your, fault, your, your default uh, uh, setting, so that even when you are not thinking, and we were speaking about this to a limited degree, yet in yesterday's class, the meditation class, uh, this becomes your, your default setting, so that even when you're in your daily life, you're in the task that you have to accomplish, you're on the freeway, whatever it is that you're doing in the course of your life, there is an underlying intentionality that's pulling you more towards awakening. You cannot go back to sleep. Your personal law becomes, I am awakening. Your personal law becomes, uh, I am heaven bent on seeing reality. Your personal law becomes, uh, I am available in, in an opening through which the spirit gets to express a through. And, those, and though you'll be walking in the world of circumstance, situation, conditions, people, places, and things, opinions, projections, your tendency is always towards waking up from that and bringing into that world more light, more luminosity, more peace, and more joy, and more harmony. Now, what begins to happen when you're trending in this way, what begins to happen when there's a deliberate intentionality that becomes an awareness, an unconscious awareness, is that you begin to wake up and you're able to notice that the part of your mind that is anxious, the part of your mind that's caught up in the lie of lack and scarcity, the part of your personality that's caught up in not enoughness, you begin to notice that that's not the real you. You begin to notice that that is a mental habit. You begin to notice that that is something that has been forged by time and circumstance, something that may have been needed even to protect yourself at times, uh, to defend yourself, to be assertive, to, be, uh, uh, to, to cope with it, whatever circumstances that your mind told you was real and everlasting. You begin to notice that that's not you. And you begin to notice that what's looking at the not you is more the real you. And you begin to notice that you have the capacity to rest in the Lord. I shall not rest until I rest in thee. As the statement of St. Augustine would say, you begin to rest in his expanded awareness, looking at that which is not real. And that which is not real begins to be healed. It begins to be disintegrated. It begins to be dissolved. It begins to have no power. It begins to have no influence. It begins to no longer make your decisions. It begins to no longer invade your conversation. It begins to no longer invade your actions. You begin to notice it operating, but it's no longer, it no longer has an avenue to express through. It becomes quite maddening at times because you've built your whole life at times on the sinking sands of a perception of not enoughness and scarcity and lack and fear and the personality to go with it and the thought forms to go with it and you begin to notice that that's not you and but you've been so identified with it that as you have more and more and more and more moments of coherence with fundamental harmony and that begins to fall apart it feels like you're going crazy it feels like, oh my God, I was doing so well until I went to that place called Agape. <laughs> I was so great. I had my stuff together and I took that class and then all of a sudden stuff seemed to just fall apart. But as you hang on in there with the real, the fundamental harmony of your being, abundance and harmony and prosperity, not the quantity that you can see, but the quality that is unseen, and then that becomes more real to you than the thought forms emanating from a personality uh, that is living in a very small myopic perception as the expanse of your being becomes more real to you than the transitory, 
there begins to come into your life a dynamic degree of a sense of peace no matter what. A sense of joy and a sense of harmony, a compassion, a kindness that's emanating not from a survival skill, not from manipulation, not from strategy, but from the depth of your being. You are waking up to the real you. Underneath all of the coping mechanisms, defense mechanisms, there is a pure being of light and love and joy and creativity and eternal unfolding forever. It begins to be uncovered and you're able to say, I am that. That's what I am. That's who I am. That's where I am. That's why I am. That's when I am. I am in the now as uh, the when. I am a, a perfect expression of the cosmos. I show the face of divinity. That's my why. I am a unique individualized expression of the grand what. That's my who. The what is the presence. I begin to understand that I'm at its center. That's where I am. You begin to walk in those five W's. The who, the what, the where, the why, and the when. And life expands. Or your perception of life expands. And the fear that comes uh, uh, from uh, an exist. An the fear of existential annihilation, uh, the fear of existential dread, as Heidegger would remind us, uh, of, of not being, uh, so that we create drama in order to feel alive. I have drama, therefore I'm alive. I have complaints, therefore I'm alive. Uh, I, I have a, a worry, therefore I'm alive. Uh, that begins to give way to I am in ecstasy, therefore I'm alive. I am in joy, therefore I'm alive. I am in gratitude, I am in thanksgiving, therefore I am alive. There is a shift from the realistic to the real. There is a shift from the, that which is temporary to the real. And then what do you get to do? You get to celebrate the temporary. You get to celebrate the impermanent. That which is shifting and shaping you in, 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 in the world of phenomena, you don't throw it away. You get to celebrate the changes that happen in the human condition. You get to participate fully, but with what? With no attachment to an outcome uh, that the condition is going to make you happy. You bring happiness to the condition. You bring joy to the conditions of your life. You bring peace and generosity and dynamic flow. You're moving and grooving in the spirit of the living God. You're knowing the real. And you're healing the unreal. You're shining light on the temporary. That you may become so embedded in the truth of your being. Now this, of course does not square uh, with uh, 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 humanity, so much of humanity as scripture would say his breath is in its nostrils, uh, does not square with individuals who are primarily materialist. If you can't taste it or touch it or see it or hear it or smell it, it's not real. It doesn't square with individuals uh, who are living primarily from a very, ne the, the individuals who are dimensionally challenged. <laughs> they only they live in only two or three dimensions, uh, dimensionally challenged. <laughs> but you, who are opening up your awareness and beginning to understand that there are, there are many mansions in the Father's house, many dimensions in universal mind, many dimensions uh, in the unified field of awareness, and you're going and preparing a place in a higher frequency through your coherence with the divine, preparing a vibrational place so that the species will rise up into a higher frequency. Years ago, you had one individuals, you had one, two people to stand up and proclaim and hold the space. The second coming of the Christ will be a group effort. 
It will be communities. It will be communities rising up and seeing it together. It will not be a singular woman or a singular man. It will be individuals coming together and in one flesh seeing the light together and seeing the real. And then in harmony, downloading a kind and just global society, downloading the systems and the structures that will deliver excellence all across the board. You're in that number. Every, all issues and all problems are mental. All solutions are spiritual. We rise in that domain. And so what are we doing? We are knowing the real and healing the unreal. Knowing is having an insight beyond memorization, beyond belief systems. It is a real knowing that comes from paying attention, from real meaningful prayer, sacred service, real meaningful meditation, so that there's an opening that happens. And once you see it, once it grabs you, once you're touched by it, your life is never the same. It's never the same. It's never the same. It's never the same. Nothing will satisfy other than that sweet kiss of the divine, that presence so real. So sublime, so delicious, so wonderful, one, 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 with the presence of God, almighty, all beauty, all joy. And now even when you sleep, you fly on the wings of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. As I said earlier, your personal law becomes a tendency Success, capital S success, unfolding of the soul. It's a tendency towards activation of potential. Every manifestation bringing with it more you. And then, without even thinking, that's your law, your fallback. I want to grow. I want to become more myself. And you, you live in an inquiry, what's real here? Where's the face of God here? Where's beauty? Where's love? Where's joy? Where's, where is it? Where is it? God is everywhere. It must be here. I'll keep asking and looking until it reveals itself. Because I'm in to that which is real, not realistic. Not transitory, real. And then it begins to have full sway over all of our bodies. Physical body, mental body, emotional body, subtle bodies. It has full sway. We change. We change. For the better, we change. The rough places are made smooth in us. We go from coarse sandpaper to fine shining up. Breathe with me here. Release. You really do have it all, you know. You really do have it all. You are an emanation of the all. And so when your mind now shifts from quantity of things to quality of a being, the allness that you are, you get to manifest exactly what you need for the grace and a harmony and an order and an elegance regardless of what's going on in the world of that which is realistic 
you can demonstrate the timeless in time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You can demonstrate that which is not caught in time in every area of your life. Your life can be an opening for a miracle right now. Whatever the newspaper is saying, whatever lack and limitation story is being proffered, you can step out of that. I am. I am. I am abundance. I am wholeness. I am beauty. I am love. I am peace. Heal the unreal. Know the real. Stand in my ever-increasing belief that comes to knowing. Heal my unbelief. That I may see as I am seen. Remember the Sufi statement that there are seven veils between us and God. But there are no veils between God and us. That the filters are in us. The projection is in us. But God, the presence... us to know the real and to heal the unreal with daily practice conviction it leads to an awakening let's turn within in this moment he's feeling since the grand vibration of enthusiasm that has captured uh, the sanctuary this evening through our sacred singers and musicians Let's feel into the dynamism of love that was felt when the visitors stood up and you loved them as they are. Let's feel the love of all of the love streamers that are streaming in from around the world, sitting in groups, many of them, and celebrating the life divine with us. And it leads us back to our conscious connection with such thanksgiving. <sighs> All of our giving begins with thanksgiving. Oh, just be grateful for that breath you're about to take right now and just be aware that if you couldn't take that breath, couldn't live with this body temple. Oh, just give thanks for that beating of that heart right now. That's the life of God pulsing through you right now. Just be grateful for that. And you're beginning to create new grooves in the mind of gratitude. And I know there's some surface tension that may want to pull you to things that you might be worried about and may want to pull you to things that you might be upset about and pull you to things that that may not be working according to your plan and, 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 and you feel that you might be being frivolous by moving into gratitude. Oh, no! Those issues are in time. Oh, no! They're mental and can only be dissolved and solved spiritually. We come into gratitude. We come into thanksgiving. We come into pure appreciation. And it rocks our world. And now we begin to notice, oh my God, we made it through the day. Oh my God, so many things have good have happened and we probably didn't even count those blessings because we took them for granted. Think of something right now that you just took for granted today. Something you didn't think about, but it just, you just took it for granted. Something sweet happened, something nice, something pleasant. Uh, somebody did something for you, and you just kind of just went on about your way, just thinking that's the way it's supposed to be, and not that it isn't. But can't you just stop right now and just say, you know, that was really sweet. That, that, that was really nice what she did. That was really nice what he did. That was really nice what he said. Just come into the space of gratitude. Nothing, taking nothing for granted. Another world opens up right here. The real. Another world opens up right now. We're opening ourselves up and becoming a candidate for the real. 
the eternal, the forever, the spiritual dimension. It spans all dimensions, infinite. And we feel so connected with the great I am. There's a community we rise on up and see the beauty that's everywhere and the love and the potential that's everywhere. I speak the word for the each of us that represents the one of us that we may be free that we may sing the song celestial and allow for our bodies to vibrate with such harmony and order and well-being that all dis-ease and discomfort is evicted from our minds, nervous system recalibrated to excellence, and those thought forms of separation dissolved into the sea. There was no thing in that. Oh my God, will you be free tonight? I speak the word for the each of us that we may be free. There's a sacred order and harmony that's being revealed through the body temple. It's a, a sacred geometry this body temple is, and the sacred harmony is being revealed through it. Our mental body is clean and clear, and our emotional body is pure. The body of our affairs are absolutely in order now, and the spiritual side of life now that invades every other area of our life right now. And all of our needs are met. Say it, all of my needs are met right now. I want you to claim it. All of my needs are met right now. In this moment of claiming that all of our needs are met, we give thanks. Let me give thanks. Ricky Beatty.
sitting next to that being is not accidental. We're coming into a dynamic community coherence around love, around harmony, around peace and joy and wholeness and well-being and abundance. And as we're vibrating at the rate of these qualities, we can embrace the beings on our prayer list and that quantum statement that was ascribed to Jesus the Christ as I am lifted up, I draw all unto me. As a community, as we're lifted up, we draw all of these beings into this frequency of wholeness.